uh, <laughs> talking about stepping on our dicks there, man. Mm-hmm. I was Nerd. like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about white bread. Yeah, but it's 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 all good, man. I mean, fuck it is what it is. It is all good, especially the fact that we are live, my friend. So this is a <laughs> <laughs> you didn't think I was gonna let you go unscathed on that one, did you? <laughs> <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, we're back to back with a double header. Yes, sir. Double header tonight. Man, it's been an interesting night, but nonetheless, welcome to another episode of the Uncommon Man podcast. As you know, no introductions here. Uh, we're just going to kind of go into, um, it's a little bit of a news in the NFL that we just want to talk about from fans' perspective. Um, we're, we're, we've been seeing a lot of the NFL rookies get signed, so we thought some of that was interesting. Of course, no Broncos. Have that sign. No, so there was there was a handful of teams that they've been pretty proactive. It seems like he, even through all this this turmoil that's going on. So Indianapolis, Buffalo, Baltimore, New England, Miami, and Cleveland, roughly through the fourth rounders. Um, but all the other Cleveland's the only one that, by the way, is captioned just through the fourth rounder. All the other ones, it seems like they've signed through seven rounds. Um, it, those guys seem to be pretty proactive, which is intriguing. Why the rest of the NFL do you think hasn't signed their guys yet? Well, it just, I uh, just, I don't think it's nothing alarming. It's just a lot of people are just not getting back to the facilities. I know a lot of these people could have done it remotely. I guess just the semantics of being in the building, signing your first contract and different things like that. I think that's what a lot of people are waiting on, honestly. Um, I, I really don't read much into it. Is I don't think it's nothing major. Why, why our people or most of the NFL haven't signed their rookies yet. Yeah, I just want to throw a shout out to you, man. I, I, I gotta, I'm not going to lie to you, man. It's been weighing heavy on my heart. I, I think this is Miami season, dude. I, I don't know why. Mm-hmm. I just I had this gut feeling. I, I think Brian Flores, I honestly think he's the answer Miami has been just feeding for for God knows how many years now. And, like, sitting there seeing what they've done and how proactive they've been since mm-hmm. he's taken over. Like, they, they, haven't, they haven't winced on anything when it comes to, you know, getting contracts knocked out. Or even, hell, you look at the, la- the end of last season. Like, they were completely in the tank. And he still rallied that team to finish out and basically dethrone the Patriots from having a first round bye in mm-hmm. the playoffs. So, like, they, there's, from my perspective, I think Brian Flores and the Dolphins are probably the most slept on team in the NFL this year. And mm-hmm. obviously, I've got a bias towards one specific team. But like, if if I had to, if I had to take the ultimate sleeper team this year, I would say it's Miami. That's an interesting take. Um... I will say healthy competition in that division will shake things up a lot. I mean, let's be honest. That division has been stale as fuck forever yeah, because right. you, you've had the Patriots that automatically that was going to run through everybody and just a clear line right to the playoffs. But now with Miami being better, Buffalo being what they are, the Jets eh, being – what they are, it's 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 it's, it's going to be a, a healthy division. I, I that's what I think. I think it's going to be healthy, a healthy competition in that division this year. I'm hard pressed to believe that the Patriots don't end up third in this division this year. I, I and mean, it's a strong fucking possibility. I, I, Very strong. I mean, let, let's face it. Patriots are more than likely going to be on a rebuild. I mean, they're going oh, yeah. to be on the rebuild mode. I mean, you're talking about going from Brady down to Stidham. Essentially, is what you're getting. I, I mean, I know people may love Stidham, but I really would love to hear like the legit Boston fan sit there and talk about their team right now and address like how they feel. Like, like is it is it terror over the fact that they're they're slumping back or they're going back into a slump, or are they like excited, like legit excited for the future and think that Tom mm-hmm. Brady was was just basically an, you know. Obviously, not discrediting him, but was he basically just an avenue and really the entire Patriots organization runs through Bill Belichick and will continue to do so for years to come. Um, so, because like I said, we, we harbor no animosity towards the Patriots. 
uh, we, I mean, truthfully, we respected the living hell out of what they've done for so long. But, you know, let's I, face it, they've gave us some of the best football in recent history. Right. I mean, the, the rivalries between Denver and the Patriots have been legendary. They've been, they've been great. But not only that, too, like, I mean, the, you know, I mean, I, I love Boston. I've been up there before. The, the people there are second to none. They're fantastic. I love the shit talking. I mean, there's no way to not appreciate that. Um, but the biggest deal about is the fact that, like, I, I really, from their perspective, I would love to know whether or not they're, they're mortified over the fact that Tom Brady's gone or if they're excited to turn the page and see exactly what's going to happen in the future with that franchise. Because, I mean, from the outside looking in, it, it honestly seems there was never a Super Bowl that was won with the Patriots if Tom Brady wasn't at the helm. I mean, it's just the reality of it. So mm-hmm. it's, it's curious now. We, we finally get the ultimate, you know, dividing or the ultimate dividend as to whether or not Tom Brady was the answer or it was Bill Belichick or it was the scheme of both of them together. So I, I think that's mm-hmm. going to be pretty intriguing with this upcoming season. But either way, I think Miami is going to blast them both games. And I think that, uh, I think that the, the Bills – I think they'll drop one game against them, but at the end of the season, I think Bills are going to end up taking the division. Do you think the Patriots go back to the shit show they used to be pre-Bledsoe? Um, Pre-Bledsoe, pre-Craft, pre-Belichick? Um, because they, they used to be fucking atrocious. Dude, that's, I'm glad used you Used to be. That is a great question, buddy, because, I mean, that, that segues into something that's kind of been, you know, dancing around the back of my head. You know, one of those when you're sitting there taking a shower going, yeah, this is a, one of these weird questions I love taking myself down the mental rabbit hole on. And it was – it literally directly correlates with this. Um, I'm going to say yes. <laughs> I feel like, unfortunately for the Patriots, I, I feel like they're going to end up in rebuild mode because I know they say – I know it's, they say a coach has to go and bomb – with the Browns before they can end up succeeding somewhere else. But mm-hmm. I, I just, I don't think Bill Belichick is the coach. Everybody really knocks them, knocks him out to be. I feel like, I feel like you honestly got literally the greatest of all time. It, you got your golden goose that was handed to you on a silver platter in what was it? Fifth round, fifth or sixth round. Mm-hmm. I know it was like what pick 200 overall, whatever that was. Yeah. Pick 200. Uh, so you got the golden goose that was dropped right in your hands and I mean, you, instead of just really appreciating him, uh, you know, you, you, at a certain point in time, you got to think that your ego is larger than the team itself. So I, I, I don't know, dude, I, I, I think, unfortunately, I, I think it's going to be a big sobering moment. And this is just coming from, you know, like I said, how spoiled we are as Broncos fans, how we were, we were in the upper echelon for so many years that we haven't really known any legit losing seasons or consecutive losing seasons. And then these last handful of years have been brutal on us. So, I mean, Patriots fans, they might – there's a good chance they'll fall back in the exact same slump. And it's unfortunate because it was cool watching them for so many years. But, mm-hmm. hey, I don't know, dude. I, I think with Tom Brady leaving, it's just going to completely just dismantle that team. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you? that was a thought that was in the back of my mind, too. I, I wondered – you could only ride that highway for so long. I mean, at, at some point, everything will come crashing back down. And, I, you know, I just remember what the Patriots used to be before – they are what we know them to be now. So, I mean, it was just an interesting take. I can't necessarily say that – I'm not 100% sure they will go back to that because, I mean, from ownership to head coach, offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, I mean, the Patriots have been so in sync to where it's, it's been a well-oiled machine. So I don't know if it's going to be another one of those – plug and they keep rolling or I mean of course I think they're gonna have to rebuild I don't think they'll go quite back to what they once was but I, I think they will hit a rebuild mode yeah it's uh it, dude it's, it's one of those the somber moments where it's just it's mm-hmm. unfortunate but I mean it it seems like every franchise got to go through it shit so um but dude I I want to take a second and I just want to go on a rant that's really been eating at me. Ooh. Then, that's right. So so this rant's on me, baby. Ladies and gentlemen. Okay. That's right. Rant time. I just want to say I'm really fucking sick and tired of the Cleveland Browns. I'm really fucking tired of them, dude. 
What's your beef with the Cleveland Browns right now? You know, I'm, I'm just tired of them constantly disappointing me. Like, okay. every single season, dude, I got them in the back of my head going, man, th- this might be the breakout year. This might be the breakout year. And then I literally – I have to snap back the reality because it's like, oh, yeah, that's right. A- every single season is still – the fucking Browns. Like, no matter how many first overall picks they have, like, it, it, at what point in time is the ownership going to assess and accept the fact that it is literally – it's a culture change. Yes, the, the team is what it is. I mean, the, the team left Cleveland. They fucking left Cleveland, went to Baltimore, and won two Super Bowls. Then they opened the team back up in Cleveland. They haven't won shit. Like, period. Like, let alone – I'm just incorporating even a playoff game. So, it's like, you know, at, at what point in time is that franchise, especially the ownership, going to take take fucking control and change up the dynamics? I don't care how much it costs, dude. You, you're not putting fucking – you're not putting asses in seats anyways. Like, change change up the image of your team, dude. Change up the overall effect and culture of the team because you've got the talent. You absolutely have the talent. <laughs> But it's it's just like this year, dude. So they they pick up that that hot shot assistant from Philadelphia as their new general manager, and then mm-hmm. then instead of waiting till the end of the damn season to pick up a coach, you go and grab Stefanski. Stefanski was a bum, dude. Guy was an absolute fucking clown. You passed up on the likes of Robert Sala. Mm-hmm. You you passed up on Robert Sala just because it was still in the middle of, of postseason. Like it's dude, it's in the middle of postseason. He just carried this team defensively, which he's done for a couple different teams, I might add, including Seahawks. He's got a Super Bowl belt or Super Bowl victory under his belt. Uh, he's won one. He's been at two of them. So it, it's like, why why would you pass? Why would you put Stefanski as the head coach? When he needed Gary, they had to call in Gary Kubiak as a special favor to Minnesota for which I don't even know how that whole ordeal went. It was one of those weird things that Denver done with Kubiak too, where he was like a he was like a, a French co- coordinator or whatever, like a, a secondary person who came in and, and consulted. He was like an offensive yeah, like coordinator, a, a offensive consultant. Yeah, which, some, I, some shit like that. Yeah, because of the fact that the year prior when Stefanski took over, they stunk. They were fucking mm-hmm. atrocious, and they couldn't even make the playoffs with Kirk Cousins after they just paid him that massive contract. So it's like you, you're going to take this guy after he just – like he worked under Kubiak for one season, one season, and they did decent. But most of that play calling you could tell was directly out of Kubiak's mouth, and you're going to make him the head coach. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, don't, I don't understand that. Like, it's like, it, they just want to keep rolling in the same single ring of disappointment for their fans. It's it just it's fucking infuriating, bro. Okay. So so okay, so you you identify that there's something wrong with Cleveland. So so are you saying that the ownership, the front office, what what are the what what are the necessary changes? Well, at some point in time it's got to be the ownership, dude. Like they they have to accept the fact that Cleveland Browns is 2020. You have to do something to invigorate the fan base. And the Cleveland Browns is not exactly – it's not even a title or a terminology that gets anybody excited. It sounds like shit, literally. It mm-hmm. just sounds like – it sounds like a metaphor for shit. So <laughs> – Shit in Cleveland. That's what <laughs> – which, which is – like I said, dude, it, it's just what there, – there's no other – go ahead and name off a, a, a more disappointing or more lullabying sounding name than the Cleveland Browns. Cleveland Cavaliers. That ain't no fucking better. Well, I, I I disagree, sir. At least Cavaliers is a better terminology than a color. The Cavaliers. A color that correlates with turd. Like, I'm, <laughs> de- I'm dead serious. Even, they, they would be better off as the Cleveland Apples. Like, I, I'm dead s- the, the, the Cleveland oh Maroons would be a better <laughs> Would be a more exciting You know it's team. bad when you have a college team that has more pool than you in the fucking state. Oh, not even – yeah, right. Not even that. They they sell out weekly. Weekly yeah. Ohio State <laughs> sells out, bro. So, it's, it's, it, dude, it, it, it's so bad that every time that they draft in the top five, which is seemingly almost every season, unbelievably, mm-hmm. now that they got Mayfield, they, they got top ten this year, which was, was still not a playoff. <laughs> 
list. <laughs> but it was top 10 at least, not top, mm -hmm. not top three. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, the guy was able to push the team to that point. But it's like, at the end of the day, every time that they bring in a new quarterback, it's, it's oh, yeah, don't worry. I, I'm here to change this franchise. It's like, I hate to break this to you, buddy, but it ain't you. Like, <laughs> the last hundred people ain't done it, bro. Right, yeah. It, like, <laughs> Tim Couch said those exact same words back in 2001. <laughs> hate to break this to you. They've got a whole bunch of different pieces of tape over that guy's name for the ensuing quarterbacks who followed. So... <laughs> Well, I mean, it's, 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 it's bad because, I mean, they have, I mean, so you have like the most important building block that you can have for a franchise is you have a quarterback. I think Baker Mayfield is, he's, he has the mindset, he has the mentality, he has the marketability. I mean, I mean, the, the guy could be a star, but it, I, I think it's just more underlining issues that's going on with the organizations to where, I just, I mean, will they ever change? I have no idea. So I want to hit on one more topic for you as much as it pains both of us because uh, mm -hmm. we, we, you know, we all have our opinions and assholes. What do you think is going to end up happening with Dak Prescott? They, I think they put him in, they, the Dallas Cowboys have put him in a hell of a, a hell of a position right now. He's been doing all this, all this uh, front. I'm not signing the contract. I, I don't want that. I don't want this. I don't want that. Well, Dallas have went out and they got another quarterback and basically said, if you don't sign that fucking contract, we can win with this guy. We can play with this guy. McCarthy, somebody signed off on this shit. Somebody signed off like, hey, I can win football games with this kid. And he's done it before. Andy Dalton has won. I mean, he, he can win. So they put him in a hell of a situation to where he can't necessarily go back and be like, all right, I signed the fucking tag now. Well, should have kind of done that a long time ago. So either you stay on your high horse and you keep holding out for more money, or you just won't be fucking playing this year. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. This was a loaded question for me because uh, I honestly hope that they just keep pressing that little flush button on the toilet seat that is Dallas Cowboys. And it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter what ends up happening at the end as long as they just keep losing every week. So, yeah. uh, again. Aust Australia reverse style flush. I don't give a fuck. Just keep making sure that they keep floating. I down. think we can agree. Fuck Dallas. I mean, dude, I just. I just, honestly, I, I don't care what happens to Dallas, but it just oh, no. it's, it's interesting what happens with the Dak Prescott thing is, is how, how do you come back from that hard stance on I'm not signing that fucking tag, I want this contract, and they say, oh, cool, watch this, we're going to go out and we're going to basically pretty much sign your replacement, because Andy Dalton has a lot of football left in him, he has a lot of football left on him, he can be productive, and I don't know if it's Jerry Jones or McCarthy feels like, hey, I can win with this dude. I'm pretty sure it's both of them. Pretty sure both of them kind of feels like, hey, we can win with this dude. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm really over this hype about Mike McCarthy being an A plus pick in this offseason. It's like, mm -hmm. uh, dude, the like Ron Rivera literally made it four games after getting fired before the Redskins were like, Yeah, we're hiring you at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. McCarthy got fired in week 12 and he's been out for, or he was out for over a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Like you're going to sit here and tell me that's an A plus pick. I mean, give me, mm -hmm. dude, even Vance Joseph got picked up immediately after getting fired. Like, that is true. So I honestly think they're going to have to eat crow for this fat, lazy eyed turd. I mean, I, <laughs> like <laughs> enjoy dude. Jerry Jones, you sitting there fucking drafting without any help, just basically telling everybody else to fucking suck a dick on your $220 million yacht or whatever it was in the midst of this. Yeah, I hope you keep eating shit for the rest of your life, dude. Your Super Bowl rings mean nothing. You mean nothing for the simple what fact that you, you have... What have you done for me lately? Not even... That's what the have, NFL. What even, have you done for me lately? What, what have you done for the franchise in general? You're a, you're a fucking joke. The only thing that you have is a bunch of people who, for whatever reason, jump on board with how much of a fucking slime ball you are. Two hundred, dude. In the midst midst of a pandemic, this guy's basically rubbing his wealth in our face, and he's gonna sit here. <laughs> it, yeah, he's gonna sit here and act like he's some sort of fucking higher deity, 
and people are going to continue to buy his merchandise. I mean, mm. that's what you fucking get, Cowboys fans, for being that completely insane. Your franchise fucking sucks, and you're a joke. Dude, him and Cliff Kingsbury shitted on everybody during the draft. Like that fucking Playboy pad Cliff Kingsbury had, and Jerry Jones sitting on his tw- you know two hundred million dollar yacht. I mean, well, I get, dude, I get the Kingsbury one, man. It's mm-hmm. it's not. It was just a giant white house. It it wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> Uh, it, giant white house. I mean, dude, that was, bitch was nice though. It, it was the most basic ass like millionaire house. It was millions, okay? A couple mm-hmm. millions. Let let's go. Let's go on the deep end to say that the house maybe cost him five, six million. Would you agree? I was thinking more like eight, but yeah, I agree. That's not two hundred twenty-five million sitting on an ocean bay. Mm-hmm. And in Miami. It yeah, and not only that too. This this is the same team who has no training camp inside of the state of Texas. That's right, Texas people. Dallas Cowboys don't even practice in your fucking state, you idiots. So as pro fucking Texas as you guys are, you're gonna sit here and let this ass clown take all of your fucking spring training over to California and just rub it in your goddamn faces. I, I just I pity you. How stupid. Uh, no. Now rant over. Rant end. All right, man. That was a pretty nice rant. You like that? Yeah. I you got that off your chest? I wanted to finish that off on a high note. Okay. I mean, that's what's up. That's what's All up. right, buddy. Well, I, I mean, shit, man. We'll, uh, we'll see how many people are really pissed off of that. Hopefully a lot. But in the meantime, the ones that, that mm-hmm. are really upset at us, make sure you like and subscribe. We... <laughs> And make sure you comment as well, because we enjoy every second of sitting there arguing over the Cowboys and anything involving the Raiders. So, uh, you you know where to find us. It's right there. You know where to comment. find us. It's right there in the like, comment section below. Like, subscribe, and we'll see y'all later. Don't forget our Twitter, Uncommon Man Pod. So, make sure that you trash talk us on that one, too, because we would love that. Yes, sir. All right, buddy. All right, bro.